<clears throat> the Bible says, how they told you that they would be mockers in the last day, a time, who would walk according to their own what? Ungodly lusts. So are those that are going to mock you. David realizes that. So he's protesting against them. He's going to tell them a few words. Notice the consecration here. The Lord, he said, I'm going to tell you something, you ungodly people. The Lord has set apart those whom he knows. But I love the wording. I just love the wording in verse 3 when David says, but no. Did you catch those two words? But no. You know why it says, but no? Because, listen, fools will not learn. Therefore, they must be told over and over and over again the same things that God's people are set apart from the ungodly. But no, you ungodly people, you better know that I'm a child of God and I serve God. I have a testimony about God, what He's done in my life. So I'm going to remind you again and again and again that I am a child of God. I do belong to God and I'm going to serve God, so keep on mocking. Amen. You know, fools just don't listen. That's why the Bible says in some, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So we just keep reminding him as believers, just keep reminding him there's a God in heaven and you better do the right thing or that God of heaven is going to judge you one day and you're going to die in your sin and go straight to hell. They need to be warned. And David is telling him that. But no, but no. Listen. It's important. God knows those who fear Him. He prizes them. He watches over them with that loving jealousy. What rare persons the godly people are. They're very rare today, amen? Very rare. The world needs to see godly people, amen? The world needs to see there is a God in heaven and there are people who serve Him and are willing to serve Him, no matter what the cost is. And David proudly says, listen, I'm a child of God here. You better know something. And notice here that the godly are precious. Therefore, they are set apart for God. We set apart things that are precious. The godly are are set apart from the rest of the world. Amen? Amen? For we know that the Lord has set apart, verse 3, for himself those who are godly. Listen, we're set apart as God's peculiar treasure. Psalm 135, 4 says that. That God, the godly people are a peculiar treasure. The godly are excellent upon the earth. Psalm 16, 3. Godly people are compared to as fine gold in Lamentations 4, 2. God calls his godly separated people. They're as precious as jewels, Malachi 3, 17. I could go on and on and on. Listen, when God looks down upon those that are born again, they're precious. Precious in his sight. Amen. And that's why the Bible says in Psalm, precious are those who die in the Lord. Because they're precious in his sight. We're precious. Never forget that. We're peculiar. Yes, we're different. Because we're set apart. We're different from the world. Here's the point. God has favored David greatly. And above all, has given this set-apart child of God, the assurance of answered prayer. He's called upon him, and he's going to get his prayer answered. David would have men deal, see what he's doing, David would have men deal with their sins and run to God in mercy. See, David's not thinking of himself right now. He's concerned more about the crowd that's mocking him. And he's trying to wake them up, say, wake up, run to God's mercy. You need help. I'm fine. <laughs> it's you that have the problem. I don't. And so therefore, you see number three, thirdly, the proclamation. Notice the proclamation in verses 5 through 8. Verse 5 says, notice what he does. He says, you that are ungodly, you that are marking me, you better offer up some sacrifices. Did you catch that in verse 5? 
Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. What he's doing here, when he says here in verse 4, Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Hey, listen, don't get angry at me. Don't get angry, angry at the God who I serve. Why are you getting angry? Kind of reminds you of Ephesians, does it? Be not angry. Do not let the sun get upon your wrath. Listen. In verse 4, he's telling them, you better surrender yourself to God with some sacrifices. He's challenging them. The psalmist exhorts his enemies, in other words, to repentance and, and amity. They need that desperately. The psalmist rises to great height. He has forgotten about himself. He's forgotten about the peril that's all been around him. And now he's proclaiming to his enemies. And he's admonishing his enemies two things here. Two things. Number one, to look inward and reflect. Verse 4. Be angry. Do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed. And what? Be still. He's challenging them. He's admonishing them. Hey, listen. Instead of getting angry at my God, instead of getting angry at the message and looking at my testimony and trying to mar it, don't get angry at that. You better go in inwardly and you better make sure that you're right with God. And notice he does that. God alone and with God and the secret chambers of your hearts in the still hours of those sleeping hours David is challenging them instead of getting some sleep why don't you get, come to God and be silent and listen to him that's what he's saying here meditate on what you are as a people For what you are you are found wanting before God a people fond uh, fighting against God and David as his chosen vessel David is saying listen you better watch out what you're doing he says search your heart because you are fighting against a child of God you don't understand what you're doing and that's what, exactly what he's doing here I want you to notice, reflection is a good thing. Amen? Amen? Reflection is a good thing here. Surrendering to God is, is, is must if one wants to live. It's good to talk to God in the secrecy of our chambers. When's the last time, people, you've got alone with God and secretly searched your heart and spent some quality time with God and listening to that still, small voice? A lot of times Christians can't hear that still, small voice is because they're so busy they wouldn't even recognize it when God called them. Listen. It's reflection time. I want to make this point to you this morning. Unless a man, woman, I don't care who it is. I'll, put, I'll rephrase it. Unless a person takes himself sometimes out of the world by retirement. I'm not talking about working. Okay. Retiring and self Reflection, if we don't do that, then we will be in danger of losing ourselves into the world. And if we lose ourselves into the world, we are no good for nothing. We're no better off than the ungodly. David is saying, you better do some reflection, people. Oh yeah, you're mocking me, you're giving me a hard time, and you're mocking my God, but I'm going to tell you something. Go ahead and mock. You better take some time out and hear the still, small voice of God before it's too late. So he admonishes, admonishes his enemies to look inward, verse 4. He admonishes his enemies to offer up a sacrifice and to trust God, verse 5. His enemies were sinners and they needed to offer up sacrifices for their sins. And he knew that. They need an atonement for their sins. It was no time to be angry. It's time to put trust in God. Amen? Amen. I believe the number one sin in America today is anger. I really believe that. Everybody's angry today, and I can't blame them. But I tell you what, everywhere you go, people are angry. I say, get over your anger and